Cassandra. Uh, what you doing over here? There's a lot going on. Uh, I'm getting out all of the musical instruments for us. Okay, and what are we gonna do with all these musical instruments? Yes, look, yeah. look, look, this one is my favorite. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and but what are we doing, Kim? <laughs> this is all. Yeah, I like this one. <gasps> that That's one's fun. fun. That's fun. Okay. Cute. So what's up? Well, I thought we would play a song. Okay. And I mean, it doesn't have to be like Beethoven or anything like that. Maybe like I know what. The theme from Star Wars. You want us to play the theme from Star Wars on this? Yes! I'm um, Kim. Kim, Kim, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you a musician? Do you have any musical training at all? Well, no. Okay, I'm not a musician either, Kim. I don't think well, so. Well, we, we could sing. No, actually, actually um, Kim, some of our friends have told me that they would rather we don't sing. Not really sing? They really don't want us to sing. They don't like my singing? No. Hey everyone, I'm Cassandra. And I'm Kim, and welcome to Central Kids TV! Uh, I thought you said you weren't a musician. I'm not, but over the break when you went to go and get yourself some coffee, I did something really useful. I learned how to play one thing on YouTube. Really? Mm -hmm. I improved you learned, myself. You learned yeah. something yeah. in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you went and got, got, got your coffee. I took the opportunity to learn something new. So, literally, like, you can play something now? Yes. Like an actual song? Yes, yeah, 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 Kim. Um, you, you are being very encouraging, don't you believe me? Well, I mean, just a few moments ago, you yeah. were a musician, you couldn't play anything, and now you can play a song? Well, okay, so not the entire song, you guys, but part of it, for sure, yeah. Like what? Like one note? No, 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 it's more than one note. Okay, okay, you're gonna recognize the song. Okay, is everyone ready? Look, I have it filmed right here, too, so you ready? Uh, I'm ready, are okay. you ready? I'm ready, okay, right. here we go. Let's see, here we go. You gotta love a good Star Wars thing. Yes, you love it. good. Now it's time for, oh it is, the story before the story. The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. After God sent the Holy Spirit, the new church began to grow by leaps and bounds. But the religious leaders wanted to stamp it out. They arrested Jesus' followers and threw them in prison. One leader, a man named Saul, was determined to get rid of as many believers as possible. Saul got permission from the high priest to travel to the faraway city of Damascus and arrest believers there. But as Saul approached Damascus, a brilliant light shone down. Jesus spoke to Saul. Blinded, Saul was led into the city. There he didn't eat or drink for three days. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Today we are talking about Saul, who is also known as Paul, right. but we'll get to that at the end. Saul's life had been changed in a single instance. He now knew that Jesus was alive, that Jesus was the Son of God, and everything the believers were saying was actually true. But Saul was still blind, mm -hmm. right? What was he going to do? Next. Yeah, Saul didn't even know what was about to happen to him. He may have even felt like really kind of like alone. Mm -hmm, maybe. He was there for like an entire three days where he was blind and just waiting to see what God had next for him. Then someone came to help him. Ananias to the rescue. Ananias was a Jesus follower and he knew the terrible things Saul had done. Remember, Saul was arresting people who believed in Jesus and even killing some. Yeah, but God had spoken to Ananias and told him to go and help Saul. Ananias must have really trusted God to go to Saul, oh, a man who had been an enemy just three days before. Yeah, Ananias went to the house and entered it. 
placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales, like fish scales, mm -hmm. like they fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. Yeah, Saul got up and was baptized. Before doing anything else, he wanted to show everyone that he believed in Jesus. Saul didn't waste any time in going out and sharing God's message. I mean, preaching in the Jewish synagogues, which is a fancy word for church. Yeah, people were amazed and confused. I bet they were. Yeah. I mean, but the religious leaders, they were angry. Oh, yeah, they were. They considered Saul a traitor, and they wanted to get rid of Saul. They decided that when Saul tried to leave the city, they would capture him. But Saul's new friend discovered the plot against him. Mm -hmm. So they hatched a pretty wild escape plan. Yeah, they got a basket and decided to lower Saul in the basket through a window. I'd be worried the basket would break. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, what do you mean? Like literally? Well, okay, so the walls around the city, they, cut, they had these homes in these walls, right? And so they were going to lower him through the window, oh. right? Till he got to the land that was on the other side of the wall. He would be outside the city and safe. And you know what? It worked. Mm -hmm. Saul escaped from the city and made his way all the way back to Jerusalem. But he didn't get a warm welcome there either. Mm -mm. People recognize Saul as the guy who put all the people who believed in Jesus in jail. Yeah. Everyone knew what Saul had done. No one trusted him. Mm -hmm. No one would believe him. It looked like Saul was stuck. The religious leaders wanted to get rid of him and Jesus followers, they didn't trust him. So it seemed there was no way forward until Barnabas stepped up to listen to Saul. Barnabas was a committed follower of Jesus. He had already sold property mm -hmm. and used the money to help other believers yeah. who were in need. Even his name, Barnabas, was a nickname that means son of encouragement. I love that. You need a little encouragement. Everybody does. Now, we don't know for sure why Barnabas trusted Saul's story. Maybe he heard about Saul's time in Damascus yeah. from a friend. Or maybe God prompted him to believe Saul. Yeah, whatever the reason, Barnabas decided to stand up for his new friend. Barnabas told everyone how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord mm -hmm. and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So many people listened that the leaders tried to kill him. Oh my goodness. Then Barnabas said, Saul is one of us. Because Barnabas was well liked and trusted, his word meant a lot. Because Barnabas believed Saul, others did too. Yeah, Barnabas stood up for Saul. And so Saul stayed with the Jesus followers. He went everywhere in Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of Jesus. The church in Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, the group of believers continued to grow. And years later, when Saul began to travel and start new churches, Barnabas was one of his most encouraging companions and friends. Saul went on to write a bunch of letters that make up a whole lot of the New oh. Testament in our Bible. Yeah, he wrote a ton. And we know Saul as Paul. Why? Well, like many people back then, Saul had two names. His Hebrew name was Saul and his Roman name was Paul, which is like the Latin version of the name Saul, right? So depending on where he was and who he was speaking to, he would either use Saul or Paul. <sighs> I'm glad you have only one name and Kim's pretty easy. Well, not really. I mean, my kids call me Madre. My husband calls me Sweetie. My sister calls me Cass. And my nephew sometimes just call me Aunt Cass, right? All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Got it, got it. All right. I know, I call you Big C sometimes. <laughs> I love how Barnabas stood up for Saul when no one else would. And because of that, the church grew and more people learned about Jesus. 
Speaking up mm -hmm. for someone can have a huge impact, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you hear a kid saying something mean or untrue about a friend or a classmate. Mm -hmm. If you stand up for your friend, it can change everything. Absolutely. Sometimes speaking up is hard. But we all can stand up for our friends. Mm -hmm. You can stand up for your friends by including them, like choosing them for a team or a group project. Everyone likes to be included. God gave each of us a voice and a choice of how to use it. When you choose to use your voice to stand up for someone, who knows how you can change the world? So, here's the big idea. Friends stand up for one another. So Kim. Yeah. Keep smiling, keep shining, knowing you can always count on me, for sure. That's what friends are for! In good times and bad times, I'll be by your side forever! See you next time on Central Kids TV. I'm Kim, they really asked us That's to stop what singing. Friends are. I, I don't That's think what we should are. be I, oh for gosh. Sure.